Today, we're taking a look at the global burden of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and I'm joined by Drs. Yonasi and Dr. Voss. Thank you for being on the program today. Thank you very much. Dr. Yonasi, tell me a little bit about how common non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is throughout the globe. So we think that the prevalence, the global prevalence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is about 24-25% worldwide. The highest prevalence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is in the Middle East, in South America, and the lowest prevalence is actually in Africa. There is also increasing prevalence of NAFLD in Asia, uh, and, and the interesting thing in Asia is that when you go to the rural areas of countries like India and China, you see lean NAFLD, meaning that these patients or these individuals are lean, but they have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. If you go, if you come back to the urban areas, the big cities like, like Shanghai, then you see obese, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So that is really the burden that we are, we are looking at. And remember that non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is a spectrum of diseases. Not everyone with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease will progress. Only a small proportion that's called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. That's probably around three to 5% in general population that will have NASH. Those are the individuals that are at risk for liver-related mortality. But also, all patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease are at risk for cardiovascular mortality. Cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular mortality is the number one cause of death amongst these patients. Dr. Voss, how big of a problem is this in children throughout the world? So unfortunately, the, the problem in children really mirrors the problem in, an adu in adults. And so as the uh, prevalence of obesity in children has increased, we're seeing rising rates of NAFLD amongst children all across the world. And it was really first reported in the United States and in Europe, um, but now we are also seeing this across Asia um, and really into other countries in the world, including India. And similarly, um, what we find is that the, the severity of disease it, what ranges widely, um, but it's it's not as mild as you would expect. And so we even see very severe cases of advanced fibrosis and, and even cirrhosis occasionally in children um, really across the, the world. Let me ask you a question now. Is there a knowledge gap in terms of understanding and treating non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in some parts of the world? And what impact does this have on patients? Well, there's a tremendous knowledge gap. So if you look at, for example, health caregivers, if we saw the primary care physician side, there is a tremendous knowledge gap. You go to the endocrinologist, especially diabetologists, where a lot of these patients with more severe form of fatty liver exist, uh, there is a, an incredible knowledge gap, gap about the importance of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease as a, as a liver disease. And that's actually in the United States. So you take this out to the rest of the world, you can multiply the knowledge gap significantly. Now then you go to the public. There is, a, you know, in fact, probably the public doesn't even understand that there is a liver complication of obesity and diabetes and metabolic syndrome. You take that one more level to the policymakers. In fact, there is absolutely no understanding of this on the policy side. The ASLD is going to have actually a congressional presentation to actually bring up the, the policymakers about the importance of non alcoholic fatty liver disease as an important liver disease of the next century. So what specific challenges do you see for you know, countries that are low to middle income when it comes to the treatment of these diseases? I think they have a, a range of problems. One is the, the knowledge gap. So we see that in pediatrics especially. Um, it may be partly due to lack of resources uh, to test for NAFLD and really understand what it is in their population, um, but also uh, they're, they're still struggling with this problem of undernutrition in some children, but yet overnutrition now in, in this you know, part of the population. And I think having, it really compounds the problem then because you, the governments and the public health agencies have to focus on both as well as the medical community. What are your goals when you go and speak with policymakers? What are you hoping to achieve in this area? Well, well, first is the challenge we have is to generate data, not only clinical data and outcomes data, 
we have to generate economic sort of data. So there was actually a couple of uh, presentation in this meeting of American Association for Study of Liver Disease that estimates the burden of illness for non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, and it's in billions of dollars. So if the United States say, uh, 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 government or policymakers are not paying attention to this disease, the cost to the society over the next 30 to 40 years would be in hundreds of millions, billions, hundreds of billions of dollars. And I think what we want to do is to educate them that not only this impacts patients' lives, patients' quality of life, but also societal economic burden. Well, you know, this sounds like a really fascinating session, and I know the attendees here at the meeting are going to want to be there. Thank you so much for sharing this with us, and thank you for your time today. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay.